了解。So today, so Dr. Matsuzaki from AST Japan will be talking about his recent theoretical study on the grand state study of the some quantum many body system using the quantum annealing with the supercomputer flux qubit. So actually, Dr. Matsuzaki san has been graduated Oxford University more than 10 years ago, right? Yeah, 2011. So yeah, 11 years ago, long time ago. PhD <laughs> from Oxford University. So anyway, so he will be talking about his recent uh, theoretical study. So please start your seminar, Matsuzaki san. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, as Kawabata-san said, I will talk about quantum annealing to prepare the ground state of XXT model by using the flux qubits. So these are my collaborators, um, Dr. Kawabata, Dr. Imoto, Dr. Seki, and Dr. Hakushima. So this is a table of contents. So let me explain the motivation of our research. So as you know, um, D-Wave has realized a quantum annealing machine to solve combinational optimization problems. However, the qubit coherence time is believed to be quite short, such as nanosecond or something like that. Of course, a D-Wave machine is excellent, but if we could use a long-lived qubit for the quantum annealing, the, perfor the performance of the quantum annealing could be better. So can we use a long-lived qubit for the quantum annealing? So, um, I believe it's very, very difficult for the following reasons. Of course, not impossible, but just I would say it's very difficult. Um, so long-lived qubit should have the weak coupling with the environment. So this is the definition of the long-lived qubit. But usually, if a qubit has a weak coupling to the environment, it also means that qubit-qubit coupling becomes weak as well. So as the general tendency, long-lived qubits usually have very weak coupling between qubits. On the other hand, as I will, as I will explain later, convention, conventional quantum annealing requires very, very strong coupling between qubits. For example, when we consider the quantum annealing, we would consider the magnetic field, Zeeman energy for G direction. Also, we consider uh, easing type interaction, JIJ. And for the quantum annealing, JIJ and uh, Zeeman energy should be comparable. So it means ultra strong coupling is required. So, however, usually uh, such uh, ultra strong coupling regime is very difficult to realize by using long lived qubits. So, this is the reason why it's very difficult to use a long lived qubits for the quantum annealing. To solve this problem, today I'll describe a spin lock quantum annealing. So we believe that spin lock technique, uh, spin lock, sorry, we believe that spin lock quantum annealing will be very useful to use long lived qubits for the quantum annealing. Actually, spin lock quantum annealing will work even for weak coupling strength qubits. So first of all, I'll explain this spin lock quantum annealing. After that, as an application of the quantum spin lock quantum annealing, I'll explain this one. I mean, by using the spin lock quantum annealing, we can prepare ground state of the XXG model. So XXG model looks like this. So this is a flip-flop type interaction, and this is a GG interaction. This is also called the Heisenberg interaction. So if we can prepare the ground state of the Heisenberg interaction, it will be very useful in condensed matter physics. So uh, let me have a quick review about what is a quantum annealing. So in the quantum annealing, we will change the Hamiltonian like this. So we have the driver's Hamiltonian. So driver's Hamiltonian is a transverse magnetic field described like this. Also, we have a easing type interaction as well. So easing type interaction has a two terms. So first term is a Zeeman energy term. It contains H. Also, it has a easing type interaction, JIJ, like this one. So by changing this Hamiltonian from the driver's Hamiltonian to the aging Hamiltonian, we can prepare the ground state of the aging Hamiltonian. So important point is H and J should be comparable to solve practically useful problems. Because if H is much larger than JIJ, then all spin down or all spin up becomes a trivial ground state. To, in order to consider the non-trivial ground state, J should be uh, larger or J should be at least comparable with the H. So this is the reason why I said strong coupling or ultra strong coupling is required for the quantum annealing. Okay, so let me explain how, um, so why the quantum annealing does work. 
So, this is an energy diagram, and x axis denotes the time, and y axis denotes the、uh, eigen energy. So, this red line、uh, is a plot for the ground state energy, and this blue plot is a plot for the first excited state energy. Usually, we prepare the ground state of the driver's Hamiltonian, like all plus state. Oops. After that, we will change the Hamiltonian gradually. So, there is a famous theorem called the adiabatic theorem. So, based on the adiabatic theorem, as long as we change the Hamiltonian very slowly, so much、uh, smaller than the,、uh, uh, much slower than the time scale, that is characterized by the energy gap delta E. So, as long as the dynamics are adiabatic, the state remains in the ground state. So, from the ground state of the driver's Hamiltonian to the、um, ground state of the problem Hamiltonian, we can change it. So,、uh, once we prepare the ground state of the target Hamiltonian, we can just measure it. Then we can prepare,、uh, we can obtain the ground state of the Ising Hamiltonian. So, this is how、uh, quantum annealing does work for the Ising Hamiltonian. So, let me explain the physical systems to realize quantum annealing. So,、um, D wave,、um, D wave company using,、uh, using RF squid cubes to realize quantum annealing. Uh, actually, the、um, actual、uh, mechanism of the RF squid cubes for the D wave is much more complicated for the technical reasons, but I think the essence can be written like this one. So we have a squid structure here, and by、uh, changing the magnetic flux here, we can change the parameters. So this is a Josephson junction. So、uh, obviously, D wave has realized the quantum annealing by using this kind of the devices. So, these devices are suitable for the scaling, and the demos and thousands of the、uh, RF squid qubits can be fabricated, and we can solve the combinational optimization problem. So,、um, there is a demonstration of the quantum annealing. Also, strong coupling strengths, such as a few gigahertz, has, all, has also been realized. These are the advantages of this. This type of the qubit. However, the, the disadvantage of this device is short coherence time. So, coherence time is quite short. It is believed to be around nanosecond. So,、um, of course, D wave devices are excellent in a sense that they can solve the combinational optimization problem. However, the coherence time is very short. So, this means that if we can improve the coherence time, maybe D wave quantum annealer's performance can be better. On the other hand, recently, capacitively shunted flux qubits are proposed and demonstrated. So, this type of capacitively shunted flux qubit has been used for a gate type quantum computer, like fault tolerant quantum computer or NISC,、uh, NISC computing.、Um, so, this capacitively shunted flux qubit has a long coherence time, such as tens of microseconds. Recently, 100, 100 microseconds has been also achieved. However, the、uh, disadvantage is weak coupling strength. Usually, coupling strength is order of megahertz. Also, no demonstration of the quantum annealing yet,、uh, probably because、uh, due to this weak coupling strength. So, our idea is by using the, if we can use the capacitively shunted flux qubit for the quantum annealing, it would be nice. So,、um, possible advantage to use the capacitively shunted flux qubit for the quantum annealing, definitely.、Uh, Quantum、uh, shap capacitively shunted flux qubit has a long coherence time. So maybe we can use a、uh, quantum property for the speed up. However, as I said before, practically it is very difficult to,、uh, to use a conventional quantum annealing for the capacitively shunted flux qubit. Because again, quantum annealing requires a strong coupling strength, like coupling strength J should be comparable with the Zeman energy, but this condition cannot be realized by the currently available by Currently available capacitively shunted flux qubits. So, this is the reason why I would like to、um, explain spin lock quantum annealing. We believe that spin lock technique can overcome these problems. So, let me explain what is a spin lock technique. So, let me consider a spin or a qubit driven by AC magnetic field. So, we have a zeta energy of omega, and we drive this qubit by、um, AC magnetic field along x direction. So, this is a time dependent Hamiltonian, but we can go to the rotating frame and we can use a rotating wave approximation. In this case,、um, Hamiltonian becomes time independent. And this omega minus omega prime is a detuning, and lambda is a Rabi frequency. 
So as you can see, um, omega minus omega prime can be as small as we want. So usually this omega zeta energy is much much larger than the uh, Rabi frequency of lambda for the capacitive shunt flux qubit. However, omega minus omega prime can be zero or can be negative or can be comparable with lambda. You can choose any value for the omega minus omega prime. By the way, I consider cosine type AC magnetic field. And in this case, after the rotating wave approximation, we have a sigma X terms here. If we, if we consider sine term here, so we have a sigma Y terms here. So be, before explaining the detail of the spin lock technique, let me explain what is a half pipe pulse. So there is a, a concept of the pulse operation uh, for a gate type quantum computer, and the half pipe pulse is used to rotate the qubit. Let's say prepare the zero state. Zero state is a spin down state, and uh, performing, um, let this state evolve by this Hamiltonian. In this case, um, this effectively means uh, rotation along the um, x axis. So prepare the down state, and after performing this uh, unitary evolution, we can prepare the spin state um, along the y direction, like this one. So if we perform the uh, sign type magnetic field, AC magnetic field, this is uh, rotation along the y axis. So we can prepare the plus state, like this one. So this is called the half pi pulse. So spin lock technique is written like this. So first of all, prepare spin down state and performing the half pi pulse along the y direction. In this case, we can prepare the plus state. And this plus state is a eigen state of the sigma x. And here we, pre we derive the uh, qubit in the x direction. So in this case, as I said before, the Hamiltonian here described like this. As long as this lambda is much larger than the detuning, then this Hamiltonian is approximated as sigma x. So you can see this plus state is an eigen state of the sigma x. So plus state is very stable against under this Hamiltonian because it's energy eigen state. So um, as long as the decoherence is negligible, um, during this unitary evolution, plus state remains in the plus state. So this is called a spin lock technique. So um, our idea is to use this spin lock technique for the quantum annealing like this. So first of all, prepare all the ground state. And after that, we can perform the half pi pulse and we can prepare the state in the plus state like this one. So here, if we continue the driving, the state remains in the plus state. On the other hand, if we, if we try to perform the quantum annealing, we can adiabatically turn off the driving strings. On, on the other hand, we can gradually turn on the aging type interaction. So in this case, um, in the rotating frame, this is equivalent to the quantum annealing. So in the rotating frame, we can perform the quantum annealing. So this kind of the uh, quantum annealing technique has been discussed and demonstrated by using the NMR. So our idea is to use this spin lock quantum, spin lock quantum annealing for capacitively shunted flux qubits. Uh, because, as I said before, in the conventional quantum annealing, it's very difficult to, um, in the, in, to realize the strong coupling strength of the J. So J cannot be comparable with omega. However, in the spin lock quantum annealing, effective magnetic field becomes omega minus omega prime. Detuning is the effective zeta energy. And by choosing the omega prime, omega prime is the omega prime is this um, AC magnetic field frequency. So by ch changing the omega prime in a um, uh, proper value, we can we can set to the this detuning value to be comparable with the coupling strength. So this is the advantage of the spin lock quantum annealing. So this means that even if the coupling strength J is weak, such as tens of the megahertz, still we can implement the quantum annealing. So this means that we could use a capacitively shunted flux qubit for the quantum annealing, and we could use the long coherence qubits for the quantum annealing. Okay, then uh, from now, I'll explain uh, our um, theoretical results. So we can use uh, spin lock quantum annealing to prepare uh, the ground state of the XXD model. So uh, let me explain the physical mechanism of the capacitively chanted flux qubits. So let um, suppose that there is a superconducting loop like this one, and this is a Josephson junction, and we have a persistent current state. So if the persistent current, um, if we have a persistent current for this direction, let me call this state as L state. 
If we have a persistent current state with this direction, let me call this state a R, R state. In this case, we can define the power matrix like this. So L is an excited state and R is a ground state. So in the flux qubit Hamiltonian, not only sigma g prime Hamiltonian, but also we have a sigma x Hamiltonian as well. So this uh, corresponds to the tunneling term, like L state become R state and R state become L state. So this kind of the tunneling term has a uh, energy of the tunneling energy delta. So the total Hamiltonian of the flux qubit is written like this. By diagonalizing this Hamiltonian, we can um, describe this Hamiltonian like this one. So it is worth mentioning that by applying a magnetic field to this device, we can control the value of the epsilon. So there is a loop here, and by applying a magnetic field B, we can um, generate the magnetic flux, and this magnetic flux penetrates this loop. So this magnetic flux phi uh, is responsible to change the value of the epsilon. So by applying a magnetic flux, we can change the value of the epsilon very easily. Okay, this is the case of the single flux qubit. Let me explain two flux qubit case. Obviously, if there are two flux qubits, there will be the interaction. Uh, in the intact, in, sorry, inductive interaction will be there. So let me explain the mechanism of the inductive coupling. So we have a persistent current here. So depending on the direction of the persistent current, according to the Biosaba law, magnetic flux will be different. For example, if we have a L direction here, in this case, a magnetic flux coming to this way. So in this case, a magnetic flux penetrate to this qubit, like this direction. On the other hand, if uh, flux qubit one has a state of the R, then uh, magnetic flux will be the, uh, the other way around the direction. So this means that depending on the qubit state of one, L or R, magnetic flux penetrating this qubit will be different. So this type of the mechanism causes the GG interaction like this one. Here, sigma G means uh, this one. So L and R uh, is a diagonalized basis of the, this sigma G prime. So this is a typical mechanism of the inductively coupling for the flux qubit. And actually, this kind of the inductive coupling between the flux qubit has been um, proposed and demonstrated. So um, this is the total Hamiltonian of the flux qubits. So first of all, we have an epsilon term here. Again, this sigma g is written like this. So this is a diagonalized by persistent current state L and R. So we have a sigma x term as well. This sigma x term causes a tunnel between L and R. So uh, by applying the microwave pulses, we can um, induce this lambda cosine omega t term as well. So this kind of the um, microwave pulses are realized for in the context of the gate type quantum computer. As I explained before, be between flux qubit, we have an inductive, inductive coupling as well. Um, so usually this is a flux qubit Hamiltonian. On top of that, if we use a very, very complicated structure, it is also possible to realize YY coupling and XX coupling as well. You can see the deta detail for this paper. Actually, in this paper, XX coupling and YY coupling has been realized. However, I would say this kind of the interaction is rather difficult to realize because the publication becomes more difficult and the circuit becomes more difficult. On the other hand, this inductive coupling is uh, much more simple because uh, if, we if we just fabricate the flux qubit due to the persistent current, um, inductive coupling will be there. So in my talk today, I do not consider YY coupling nor XX coupling by using this way. So in my uh, talk today, I consider just inductive coupling between flux qubit. Okay, so we start from this Hamiltonian and let me uh, transform this Hamiltonian by using some mathematics. By the way, there is some chat here. Uh, question, oh, sorry. Um, why does a microwave driving field couple to sigma y rather than sigma x? Ah, that's very, very uh, important question. Oops. Yeah, um, we, um, there are two ways to drive the flux qubit. Firstly, sigma g or sigma y. So driving to the sigma g is easy. 
So,、um, as I said before, if we apply the magnetic field to penetrate, penetrate this loop, this change epsilon. So, if we apply the AC magnetic field,、uh, sigma G has a cosine omega T or sine omega T. So, sigma G、uh, microwave field driving is easy to realize. So, in my talk today,、uh, so、uh, I, I chose sigma Y、uh, driving, but sigma G, cosine omega T sigma G is also realizable. Also,、uh, I didn't explain the detail, but not only、uh, magnetic field degree of the freedom, but also flux capacity with the flux cube has a charge degree of the freedom. If we use the charge degree of the freedom, we can drive the qubit in the sigma y direction as well. But again, not only sigma y, but also sigma g direction is compatible with my scheme. I hope this answers your question.、Uh, also, sigma x driving is very difficult to realize. Uh, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you for the question. So, in my talk today,、uh, please interrupt me every time. So, like, you can,、uh, you can turn on the speaker and、uh, you can ask me the question directly um, um, by, by voice, or you can、uh, send me the chat, chat email.、Uh, either is okay.、Um, okay, okay. So, starting this from Hamiltonian, let me perform some mathematical、uh, transformation. So,、uh, I wanna、uh, diagonalize this Hamiltonian. So, I'll change the basis in the y rotation, along y rotation. So, after this y rotation, Hamiltonian becomes a little bit difficult, little like this one. So, yeah, this is actually very messy Hamiltonian. However, we can go to the rotating frame and we can perform the rotating wave approximation. After the rotating wave approximation, Hamiltonian becomes rather simple, like this. So, we have a sigma y term, detuning or zeta energy term, and GG interaction term, and flip flop interaction term as well. And this delta omega is、uh, de defined like this. This is effectively the detuning, detuning between the qubit frequency and the microwave driving frequency. Okay, so let me summarize my mathematical transformation. So, initially, I start this Hamiltonian and I go to the rotating frame and rotating wave approximation, and we go to the, this effective Hamiltonian. The interesting point is that originally we have only GG interaction. However, in the rotating frame, we have the、uh, flip flop interaction as well. This is the Heisenberg type interaction or XXT model. So let me explain the meaning of the、uh, Hamiltonian. So we have a sigma y term. So sigma y term is equal to sigma x term because,、um, so, um, Total Hamiltonian commute is a total magnetization. So we can rotate to the Hamiltonian along the、uh, G axis. Then this sigma y term can be sigma x as well. So this is a transverse magnetic field term. Lambda is Rabi frequency. Also, you can see this is problem Hamiltonian, so called XXG model. So we have a, a, a zeta energy longitudinal a magnetic field term here, and we have a GG interaction, and we have a flip flop term interaction as well. So you can see this is a driver Hamiltonian, this is a problem Hamiltonian. So by changing the parameter gradually, we should be able to perform the quantum annealing to obtain the ground state of the XXG model. Okay, so、um, I explained the general theory. So let me explain our new maker simulation results. So we'll consider two dimensional XXG model and I'll consider six qubits here. So I'll consider four cases, like delta is 0.7 or 1.7. Also, J is negative or positive. So you can see that for these three cases, we have a unique ground state, but for this case,、uh, there are two、uh, degenerate ground states. So, we'll solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation with the original Hamiltonian. So, original Hamiltonian means, so this Hamiltonian. So, this is a time dependent Hamiltonian, but we use this Hamiltonian and perform the numerical simulation to check if a quantum annealing will, will be successful or not. And I'll consider these four cases. And this is a numerical simulation result. So, interestingly, so x axis is a time and y axis is a fidelity. And as time goes, fidelity goes up. And omega is the、um, flux qubit energy. And you can see if flux qubit energy is very large, like 20, in that case, fidelity goes up. On the other hand, if omega is small, fidelity is not so good. So this means that as we increase the value of the omega, rotating wave approximation becomes better and better. And our scheme approach, approach to, approaches to the conventional annealing. So, um, 
here and here, uh, our proposal seems to be successful in a sense that fidelity equals almost one. However, this case and this case, fidelity is almost zero, like 10 to the power minus 11 or 10 to the power minus 12. So these cases, uh, actually, our uh, scheme becomes uh, failure. But it's not the... Um, it's not a disadvantage of our scheme because you can see this effective Hamiltonian case. So this effective Hamiltonian is this, uh, this case. So this conventional quantum annealing is the effective Hamiltonian case. So you can see, so even for the conventional quantum annealing case, fidelity is almost like zero. So this means that for these two cases, for some reasons, quantum annealing does not, cannot be successful almost at all. So I change many parameters, like I change the annealing schedule. So I try to change the Hamiltonian slowly to satisfy the adiabatic condition, and I change every parameter, but still quantum annealing is not so successful. So, um, yeah, these two successful and these two are failure. So we, uh, consider the reason why very carefully. And after that, we came to the conclusion here. So our conclusion is that quantum annealing could be failure even for a longer annealing time if the following conditions are satisfied. So I'll explain this. Yeah. Question, if you are performing annealing with an effective Hamiltonian instead of the original Hamiltonian, is the coherence ex Expected to have a more damage effect? Ah, that's a very good, good question. If we perform annealing with the effective Hamiltonian instead of the original Hamiltonian. I do not know. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, OK, let me answer this way. Spin lock technique is a very useful technique to suppress the low frequency dephasing. So in the experiment, by using the spin lock technique, actually, coherence time becomes longer. This is the experimental result. So that's the reason why spin lock quantum annealing will be robust against noise, against the coherence. So uh, if we use the uh, effective Hamiltonian, I think that's uh, the coherence is expected to have a more damaging effect. I hope this answers your question. So um, I'll explain the con oh, <laughs> Uh, thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your question. So I'll explain the uh, sufficient condition for the quantum annealing to be failure, even for a long annealing time. Uh, let me assume that there exists an observable A, and this observable A commutes with a total Hamiltonian like this one. Uh, also, I'll consider the ground state of, of the driver's Hamiltonian as GD, and the eigenvalue of uh, A is like A. Actually, total Hamiltonian and A commutable. So ground state is also an eigen state of A. So ground state of the driver's Hamiltonian and ground state of the problem Hamiltonian has an eigenvalue of A and A prime. And let me assume that A and A prime is a different value. So if these conditions are satisfied, quantum annealing always fail even if adiabatic condition is satisfied. Because these two, like ground state of the driver's Hamiltonian and ground state of the problem Hamiltonian belongs to the different sector. And it never cross, it never interact. So due to this uh, condition, we believe that our, it's freezing. Yeah, due to this condition, we believe that these two become failure. So uh, let me check these conditions are satisfied for these two cases or not. So again, this is a pro uh, problem Hamiltonian. And I check that total Hamiltonian actually commute with this observable. So this U swap is a swapping between first qubit and second qubit. And this U swap 3, 4 uh, is a swapping gate between 3 and 4. And this is a swapping gate between 5 and 6. And let me define the observable A like this one. Actually, total Hamiltonian commute with this operator. Also, driver's Hamiltonian ground state is an eigen state of this observable, and eigen value is a plus one. Problem Hamiltonian's ground state is an eigen state of this uh, observable, and eigen state is eigen value is a minus one. So you can see this value and this value is different. So these conditions are satisfied. So quantum annealing for these cases never be successful due to the symmetry. Of course, um, we want to try to do our best to be successful for the quantum annealing. But this case, quantum annealing is always failure. So how to overcome this problem? 
So the answer is easy. Due to the symmetry, the quantum annealing becomes failure. So let's break the symmetry. That's our solution. So in our previous numerical simulation, we consider homogeneous magnetic field in the y direction. But let me consider inhomogeneous driving Hamiltonian. So this lambda is not homogeneous anymore. So we use the random value and set random j. So in this case, uh, if we choose the kind of the random value, then total Hamiltonian does not commute with this observable anymore. So choosing some randomized value and I perform the numerical simulation, then you can see by increasing the value of the omega, fidelity goes to up and go approach to the one. So yeah, quantum annealing becomes successful for the large omega. So our conclusion is that when quantum annealing becomes failure due to the symmetry, we can use the randomized transverse magnetic field. So quantum annealing will be successful. So yeah, this is a summary of my talk. So we propose to use a spin of quantum annealing by using long-lived superconducting flux qubits. Also, by using the spin lock quantum annealing, we can prepare the ground state of the XXC model. Also, we have found a case that quantum annealing becomes all, always failure due to the symmetry for uh, if some conditions are satisfied due to the symmetry. Uh, even for such case, by using the randomized transverse magnetic field, we can break the symmetry and the quantum annealing become successful again. So yeah, thank you for listening. Ah, thank you very much, Masunaki-san. So now the session is uh, open for questions and comments. So we already have uh, two uh, questions in chat okay. already uh, answered. So if you have a question, so please use hand, red hand border and uh, sit on your microphone. Do you have any question? Ah, Paul, please. Yeah, I, I, I have a quick question. So yes, please. Very, very nice talk, Matsuzaki Zen. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Quite quite early on in your presentation, when you were introducing uh, quantum annealing, you had a driver term which went like e to the minus t squared. Ah, yeah, sorry. Why is there any particular reason you choose that driver, or is that just uh, uh, um, so um, usually it's linear scheduling, as you know, but uh, from my experiments. From my numerical experiments, uh, usually um, quadratic uh, scheduling is better than the linear scheduling if we consider the spin lock quantum annealing. So I don't know the exact reason why, but of course, linear scheduling also uh, works. Yeah, but yeah, for the sp uh, spin lock quantum annealing, usually quadratic uh, scheduling is better. That's the reason why I choose this schedule. I hope this will answer your question. Good. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Good. So, any other question? I Okane-san, okane can you? Ah, yes. Yes, please, yes. Uh, uh, I have a question about uh, observable A. Yeah. Uh, is there a procedure to find uh, observable A uh, commuting Hamiltonian? It's a very good question. The answer is no. At least from my... From my best knowledge, there are no way to find the A in a systematic way. So just we should use our brain to find A. Yeah. So that's tough work. But yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, because if there is no way to find A, in that case, quantum annealing could be failure without knowing it. Like, hey, we perform the quantum annealing with a long level qubit and for very long annealing time. So quantum annealing must be successful. That's what we believe. But if there is A, then quantum annealing might be failure. And we don't know it's failure or successful. So, so yeah. Uh, however, one possible solution is to use randomized um, transverse magnetic field. I believe that if I use randomized transverse magnetic field, usually A does not exist. Of course, there are no mathematical proof, but that's my belief. But yeah, practically just using very randomized transverse mag magnetic field, that's um, uh, yeah, that's one of the solutions, a heuristic solutions. Mm. And does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Any other question or comment? Okay. If not, so let's close the seminar. Actually, that uh, are quite interesting topics, and uh, hopefully that the uh, USA will be uh, realized experimentally in the near future. So yes, it's been wonderful seminar. So okay, so let me close the uh, Inca seminar. 
Yes, and uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind attendance. See you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Okay. See you bye. next. Bye.